everybody welcome to and welcome back to my youtube channel you are always welcome here i'm so glad you guys found your way here and now that you are here make sure you guys subscribe to my youtube channel and click the notification bell so you guys can get notified when i post new videos today is may 25th and here in america that is memorial day so i hope everybody is enjoying their memorial day and having fun and being safe i have a really exciting video for you guys i'm going to be doing a reading vlog i finished reading layer of dream by Libra bray so today i'm going to be reading before the devil breaks you by Libra bray also seven husbands of evelyn hugo by taylor jenkins reed this is actually a way overdue reading vlog for me. I should have been read these books last fall. Better late than never. It's really freaking hot in here and I'm not sure if it's because of the weather changing or this big ring light that's in front of me or I'm wearing sweatpants right now so I'm like sweating but we're just gonna have to push through this. So Before the Never Breaks You is the third book in the Diviner series and I was actually reading that series for the Diviners read along that I think ended in February because King of Pearls came out in February so that might have been like the last month in March really. This maniac guy in a stove pipe hat has been just chasing these kids around. Well not really chasing them. They're really chasing him. They're trying to stop him. He's like a spirit. He's not even real. It's like super bizarre. It's really scary but it's also kind of like I don't know, it's just kind of funny. I really enjoy following this series. I really love the characters. I hope that this book is an easy read. Blair James was like 560 pages and that's like a record for me. So this one is 550, about 550 pages and the font is quite big in this one. I got the hardcover edition rather than the paperback edition like I did for Layer of Dreams so that might also make a difference because this looks really freaking thick. I'm kind of actually scared to read this book to be 100% honest with you guys. The Diviners is a really scary series. I mean the first book was really scary. I could not read that book at night. It was really that scary. Layer of Dreams wasn't as scary as the first book The Diviners but this title just seems pretty scary like when I look at it on my bookshelf sometimes I get a little freaked out. I'm going to start this book first. I th no 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 no. Actually, I'm going to start with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo because this one is a contemporary novel and I just want to give myself a little break before I like jump in right back into the Diviner series. I feel like it can be overwhelming with all of the spookiness and stuff. Oh, but this book looks like it's going to be a very easy read. Like, wow, I'm really excited for this one. It's only 385 pages. Oh my goodness, 300, no, 389 pages. Honestly, like, this is the type of book that I could read in, like, two days, if not one day. So I'm probably just going to try to read this one all evening, and then tomorrow I'll start Before the Devil Breaks You. That sounds like a plan. Sounds like a good plan. You guys know this story is about Evelyn Hugo. She was an old Hollywood film actress and she hired a journalist to write her memoir and it goes into like intricate details about her past and you know the seven husbands and the relationships that she's had and her rise as a film actress in Hollywood so this seems like it's gonna be really interesting. It is 6 19 in the afternoon and I was supposed to film this video in the morning but I actually worked today and I had to spend a lot of time working. So yeah let me give you guys a little bit of rundown of what I did this morning. I painted my nails this cute French tip and they're literally drying as I speak right now. I love friendship. They're like my go-to lately because they're super easy. I'm trying to go natural, like no acrylics or anything like that. And probably I'm gonna stop going to the nail salon. I'm probably just gonna start doing my own nails and then growing them out. I got this new product that is a, it's a nail hardener. So it makes your nails really, really hard. And I've applied it on Saturday, I think it was, or Friday. And, no, 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 it was Thursday because I got it. I got it on Thursday and then I applied it on Thursday and it literally like I thought it was like I just thought it was more like a like acrylic like something that makes your nails hard, but it's not actually like a tip like a fake tip and it literally started to burn. I was like, what the heck is going on? I was like, why is it hurting so much? And I literally fought through the pain all night and then the next day it kind of like subsided but that night the next night I had the worst 
headache ever like literally i had a migraine and i could not work like i could not do any reading i could not do homework i could not work i could not do anything that night so i literally like tapped early the next day i felt better i had to take that stuff off but i'm gonna keep applying it because it actually really works and made my nails really really hard it's supposed to prevent your nails from chipping so cute french tip it's sexy classy oh yeah i just cut five inches off of my hair like four to five inches off of my hair just yesterday on a whim i had to do it like and i was crying too because like my ends had gotten so bad from the straightening and the color treatment and then i was wearing extensions and it was just like not good for it but the good thing about it now is that it's super healthy it's like i love it it's way shorter than it was before but i love it it's so freaking cute i don't know what to do with it like that's why i have it in a bun but i'm gonna try to figure out some more styles to do with my hair so pretty much for the rest of the evening it's just gonna be reading doing homework and eating okay so i'm just gonna get started i'm gonna be reading in my room so let's just jump right into it <laughs> she's biracial her parents are black and white and Evelyn Hugo is Cuban so a lot of representation in here she's beautiful from the description of her this book is modern it is written in 2017 so like present day kind of thing it's narrated by the journalist Moni Grant so it's written in first person which is cool that's different from a lot of the books I've read recently so just that change of perspective is kind of different okay so in the first chapter um, it starts out with like a news article and then there's like an email and then there's also like a group chat of like journalists like going back and forth like discussing the superstar Evelyn Hugo and then the journalist who was specifically chosen by Evelyn Hugo to do the interview so this should be interesting and I think that Evelyn Hugo currently resides in New York so that's interesting that the other book that I'm reading is also set in New York so that's cool a lot of books that I've been reading have been set in New York so I need to get some other books that are like in different areas in the world i'm going to keep reading this book for the rest of the evening and then i'll come back tomorrow and update you i think i want to get done i think i even want to get like about 150 pages down tonight and then just read the rest of the book tomorrow and finish it off and then yeah, I'll give you guys my review for it and everything in this vlog so yeah i hope you guys have a great day and i'll see you tomorrow don't you just love when you park your car in a shady spot when you go back in it it's like nice and cool because it's like really hot today but yeah so how are we doing today i didn't even do anything to my hair i just put it up in a bun don't know what to do with it just yet today is my mom's birthday so happy birthday mommy i love you hope you're having a great day See, this is how I just be rocking my hair. I would literally just put it up in a bun. And I'm good to go. I do not know how to vlog. I mean, I do know how to vlog. Like, I kind of get the gist of it. But I don't know. I'm just going to try to make this vlog as interesting and fun as possible as I can for you guys. Today is going to be a great day. I'm so excited for the day. It's Tuesday. So since I'm on my way to work, I'm going to get some work done, obviously, in the morning and in the afternoons as well. But then I'm definitely going to be reading. I'm going to be studying. I need to eat. I'll probably 
eat when I get home. Ooh, I actually have a book that I can be listening to right now. So I'm going to listen to some audiobooks and then yeah, I'll check in with you guys later. Hey guys, so I'm currently outside and I'm looking for a really good aesthetically pleasing area to take a really nice bookstagram photo for The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I think I just found the perfect spot. Alright, so I'm back in the car. I finished listening to two audiobooks this month. Well, actually I finished one last month and then I finished one this month. So the one that I finished last month was The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Edgar, I think that's his name. And then the one that I finished this month was The Secrets of the Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. The Secret of a Millionaire Mind is pretty much, you know, about your mindset, your perception of like money, how to attract wealth and how to build generational wealth. The Secrets of the Power of Intention by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer was about connection, like connectivity, connecting with the, the field of intention, connecting with other people, connecting with source, source energy, and I think it was the seven faces of intention and like what they look like, how to be a person that attracts good things, that attracts good people, a person that attracts good circumstances, it gives use certain affirmations to kind of speak out loud whenever you feel like your frequency may be like low or you might be you know in a negative state of mind so he gives like phrases that will enforce like a life that you would want to live for like instance he says things like it is my intention to feel good something as simple as saying it is my intention to feel good can change your mood instantly can change your circumstances instantly and you can apply this to virtually everything in your life to make your circumstances better for you you know because you deserve that so yeah if you guys would like for me to make a video going into further detail about these books the secrets of the millionaire mind and the secrets of the power of intention then like this video or leave me a comment and let me know that you would like for me to make a video speaking about those types of books because I really love those books. I'm probably going to start a new one today since I just finished the other audiobook that I was reading. So yeah, I'm going to start one today and finish reading The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. So yep i'll see you guys when i get home and i will update you guys momentarily what is up guys so today has been a very long day to say the least when i got home from work around like 3 p.m i got like a massive migraine so it was really hard for me to be productive but i still managed to push through the book that i was listening to on my way home from work is the subtle art of not giving a f by mark manson and this book is really interesting to say the least i've only listened to it about like 30 minutes into it but so far what i know about it is that it's a little bit of reverse psychology when it comes to your perception of like negative situations so pretty much we should approach negative situations by simply not giving a f and it's quite like it's like circular logic like circular reasoning but it makes sense to me he's saying that like if you approach a negative situation with you know like just accepting it then it will render a more positive outcome in the end so pretty much like if you know something is you perceive is going wrong then if you just simply like accept it for what it is and just don't give up then it would be beneficial to you at the end of the day because you wouldn't care and it wouldn't have power over you so that's pretty much what i received from listening to the audiobook so far so i'm really excited to keep listening to it um you know throughout the week because i really typically listen to audiobooks when I'm driving to and from work. I'll keep you guys updated on that book. Yeah, for the rest of the night, I'm pretty much just going to be studying for my stat class because I have to pass that. Uh, please pray for me because I really have to pass this class with an A. But yeah, we'll pick this back up tomorrow with The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I'll keep you guys posted on that. For now, I'm going to go hit the books. So this is good night and sweet dreams. Until tomorrow, darlings.
I'm just living my best reading life ever. I finished listening to The Subtle Art of Not Giving a F by Mark Manson. It was okay. Like, I listened to the audiobook, so I wasn't really, like, into the book. Not an audiobook that really kept me engaged. It wasn't, like, the most enjoyable audiobook I listened to, but the content like the subject matter was good so i gave it a four out of five stars today is wednesday june 3rd and i believe that people are going to be protesting today so i may or may not go out to washington dc to protest but if i do i'll definitely try to get some vlogging footage in there i'm currently listening to uh, the last black unicorn by tiffany haddish and it's kind of like sentimental really like it's funny but then it's also kind of like sentimental it's heartfelt i've gotten through to about like 40 minutes worth of the audiobook i'm still in the midst of finishing the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i think i got a little overly ambitious because I thought that I was going to be able to finish a book within two days. But it's not that I can't finish a book in two days. I can if I had time. Like, I'm a very busy person. I really have a lot going on in my life. And then with everything that's going on in the world, like, it's kind of hard for me to commit to reading a single book in an entire day because, I mean, it would take me about like half a day and like i need that time like i need that time to focus on other activities other projects that i'm working on but i mean who cares like i'm still gonna finish the book i will um see you guys when i get in the house or maybe later or at the protests yeah i'm going to bring you guys along with me welcome back so since the last time we saw each other i had completed four books and three of them are audiobooks and then one of them is a physical copy of the seven husbands of evelyn hugo so i just want to share my updates with you guys and i'm going to start in the order in which i completed the books so the first book is the subtle art of not giving an f by mark manson one thing that i wanted to mention to you guys about this book earlier is that it reminds me of a Dr. Wayne W. Dyer quote that says you'll never get enough of what you don't like and what that quote means to me is that if you continue to talk about the things that you don't like if you continue to talk about the things that you don't want you're going to bring more of that about into your life whether you realize it or not or whether you like it or not so that's what it means by the quote you'll never get enough of what you don't like. This book may seem like it contradicts the viewpoints of other self-help books that I've read most of them because this book stresses the importance of saying no and I kind of think that it means that you know turning down things that aren't f worthy so that you like free up some space for the things that you actually care about but what other self-help books talk about is like how people who are well connected always say yes to the universe they don't turn down experiences so this book also incorporates some critical thinking about the metrics that we set for ourselves and how it determines how successful we'll be or what we deem as successful so it's just something to really think about and i really like the book i gave it a four out of five stars so so you can check out my rating on Goodreads if you're following me. My link is in the description bar down below. This book that I completed is The Last Black Unicorn by Tiffany Haddish and I love that book. I gave it a 5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was so funny and it was so heartfelt and it made me cry at some points and it made me laugh at some points exactly like she said that it would in the book. This is one of the books that made me laugh like harder than like any other book that I've read before and like at some points I feel like I could relate but I just really love funny people. I love comedians because it's refreshing to be able to you know have somebody else make me laugh or change instead of me always making myself laugh so yes i loved the last black unicorn and if you haven't read it yet you should definitely pick it up soon the third book that i completed and i really need to get my thoughts together with this one so please bear with me the seven husbands of evelyn hugo now this book is amazing okay it literally slapped so hard like i wasn't even expecting it i know a lot of people have hyped this book up in the community but it's just different when you actually read it for yourself and experience it for yourself the seven husbands of evelyn hugo is all about evelyn hugo 
who was a Hollywood film actress, a very popular Hollywood film actress. She was like one of the most popular Hollywood actresses of her time turn philanthropist. So picking back up where I left off on this book, I realized that it was actually narrated both by Monique Grant, the journalist, and Evelyn Hugo, as Evelyn Hugo is telling Monique Grant her story. And it's really admirable that the author was able to fit an entire lifespan into 389 pages with the additional plot twists that are just lingering between the pages. This book is glamorous and provocative and it gave me those vibes like I gotta get back to reading this book as soon as I put it down. Like I genuinely miss Evelyn and Monique after every time I put this book down. It was really spellbinding. It was really hard for me to put it down. There's something so mysterious about Evelyn Hugo in this biography that she wants Monique Grant to write for her. And you know, it's just something about knowing that there is going to be a plot twist. Like it already tells you that there's going to be a plot twist from the jump that just leaves me on the edge of my seat and the character development was really really great like I was seriously like invested in these characters and I didn't think that I was going to be invested in these characters for the simple fact that I just felt like Evelyn Hugo was like otherworldly like she was just but she's very human like she's very very like down to earth the real Evelyn Hugo but the actress Evelyn Hugo not so much there are some sexual scenes in here that did make me cringe a little bit and this is the first book that I've ever read that has some female and female action so that was really interesting side note about the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo this book seriously had me questioning my own sexuality because Evelyn Hugo and Celia St. James I'm not mad about it. It's an intoxicating book. It was very hard for me to put it down. There are so many elements within this book from Evelyn Hugo's relationship with a woman to all of the husbands that she's had to remain famous and this mysterious secret that she's keeping from Monique Grant and just how cavalier or casual she is about her passing away. And the book is very media driven. Evelyn Hugo is a very multi-dimensional woman. She's very emotionally complex and has very many layers as she's always known as a child that she was going to be someone famous. She was going to make her a name for herself. I love her character despite the plot twist at the end. The story is very nostalgic because Evelyn Hugo goes back in time to explain her story. So the ending was very hard to finish for me. It was very hard for me to read the ending. Another side note, though there is representation in this book of diverse characters, and I'm really big on representation of diverse characters, the characters were only relevant to the plot and they don't quite stand on their own. It's like the person of color inevitably has to somehow tie into the plot of the story without there actually just being representation of diverse characters and I just find that that actually minimizes the effect of having diverse characters in the first place. Can we just get some representation of diverse characters who aren't necessarily pawns or have anything to do with the plot for once? But this character that I'm referring to is very ambiguous throughout the story and it's a very very heartbreaking there are plenty of sensitive topics within this book there's tragedy it surveys the spectrum of life and death and there's just so much that comes within this book and it's in such a small package the story really touched my life and I just feel like I'm always going to remember the story of Evelyn Hugo it is an amazing book it's heavy and I really believe that this book should have been a number one bestseller and I think that the author was actually pregnant when she was writing it so I think that that's really really cool it's probably one of the best contemporary novels I've read this year so far so bravo to Taylor Jenkins Reid this is a really great story the story lingers on after you've read it and it gives us Hollywood intrigue so like that classic you know Hollywood LA vibe. So the fourth book that I completed is The Power by Rhonda Byrne and this is the second book to The Secret by Rhonda Byrne and I haven't read The Secret in four years so it was really nice to refresh my memory with this book. The Power really helps me to create better affirmations that I can use in my life and it really really emphasizes the importance of love, how to give love, how to receive love, how to become a more loving person. It also talked a lot about giving thanks and having gratitude and 
finding the beauty in any and everything in life. A lot of these concepts are things that we always hear in all of the law of attraction books but this book really drives it home all right guys so thank you so much for watching this video if you've made it this far i am going to leave some links in the description bar below for you guys to sign for petitions if you want to donate anything to help the black lives matter movement is greatly appreciated if you are subscribed to me if you follow me please check these links out before i go i just want to say i love you guys and i hope you guys are being safe and i hope you guys are all healthy and well and taking care of yourself and i will see you guys in my next vlog so stay tuned bye